Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this service of worship. Before we get to our announcements this morning, I would like us to sing a beautiful centering song. Uh, you will find it in your hymnals, hymn 446, and that's the B part, the second part. And I would like, uh, Forrest, you, you're going to come up here, hey? And I, I would like John and the choir just to sing through it once, and then we can follow by singing it twice. Thank you so much.
Friends, once again, welcome to this service of worship this morning. Um, we have the wonderful opportunity to have two people going public with their faith today. Anna Kelly and uh, Dana Romero. And I would like to welcome their families here as well this morning. It's so good to have you here. It is a, a wonderful privilege for us as a church family to welcome new members to our congregation. And it's good to have you here in joining with us in those celebrations. So tomorrow, uh, this morning after the service, you're more than welcome to join us for some fellowship in Metcalf Hall. It's really for those of us that are comfortable to interact with people. Um, welcome to do that. And this morning, the lemonade will be served by three of our youth, Mason, uh, Mackenzie, and Cameron. And I believe you guys are leaving for Camp Kintail after the service this morning. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for helping out this morning at Coffee Hour and Fellowship. Um, there's just another... Oh, then it's very important for you to know that the pictures that was taken for the directory, they have all been sent out. Now... Judy mentioned this morning that there is a few people that haven't received theirs. And if you are one of those, please email or contact Judy so that she can follow up with the company that took the pictures for us. I also saw a few at the back table there this morning, um, but I don't see the people in attendance this morning whose pictures are there. So please just take a note of that. Um, I think this takes care of the announcements unless Johan forgot something. Nothing, nothing more. Good. Dear family and friends, let's call on God in worship. God has set this day before us, a day set apart, a day of rest and praise. God has set our lives before us, a span of years in which we love and learn and serve. Let us worship God. Amen. Dear family and friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's join together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, and this Sunday morning, when we are gathered here as your children, we don't want to just rush through our worship. We want to and we need to wait upon you, you who is our help and our shield. We are gathered to be renewed so we can live according to your purpose for our personal and congregational life. You are our God, and we offer you our loyalty and praise. And we do this so everyone would see that we belong to you as we follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ our Lord. This morning we also need to take time to confess that we are not always ready to do what you call us to do. Many a time we are afraid and uncertain, and we hesitate when you call us to act. 
Lord, and we know that uncertainty and fear lead us to a place where your mission many a time comes second in our lives. We come in these moments trusting your forgiving love, renewing us. In a world that tells us so many things about what is best for us and what to believe and who to believe, we pray, come to us and speak your truth to us when we read your word today. Amen. David in Psalm 51 shared these wonderful words, uh, words that I would like to offer to you as the assurance of pardon this morning, words that we can also embrace in our own lives and in this coming week and in the coming month, live by these words. So David wrote and said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me, do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. As I've mentioned this morning during the announcements, we have the joy of having uh, two people go public with their faith, and I would like to call on uh, Anna and Dana to join me here on the stage. Okay, just so you know, this is Anna, ah, Anna, Anna and Dana. So it's very close, just, uh, just so you know. So it's wonderful, uh, you two, to have you here present with the congregation today. Uh, Anna was actually part of a group of young people that went public with their faith in May of this year. But uh, the family dealt with COVID, and she had to self-isolate. And then just after, actually it was before that, uh, Dana made contact with me and I contacted her and, and we embarked on a wonderful journey. Uh, and uh, Dana is also ready to, uh, to profess her faith this morning and go public with her faith. So it's wonderful, Anna, that you don't have to stand here alone this morning. And Dana, I know it's wonderful for you as well not to be able to stand here alone. So may God uh, bless the two of you uh, being part of this congregation as professing members here at Knox. So I would just like to read a short preamble to you uh, and to us as a congregation. Friends, you have been uh, baptized as members of the body of Christ. You have been instructed in the belief and the practice of the church. In making a public profession of your faith today, you desire to affirm your baptism and claim the rights and the responsibilities associated with membership here at Knox Presbyterian Church. By grace, you have been saved by faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Wonderful gift that God has given the two of you. Anna and Dana, you stand before God and his congregation to affirm the covenant God made with you at your baptism, to acknowledge your growth in grace, and to assume responsibility as a disciple of Jesus Christ in this congregation and in God's world. Are you ready to make public profession of your faith today. I am ready. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Wonderful. And this is what we all believe this morning. Let's just bow our heads and have a prayer together. Our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of your church, we come to you with thankfulness and gratefulness in our hearts for this wonderful profession of faith that Anna and Dana did this morning. We know that they belong to the living God as we do as your congregation. And our prayer as a church family this morning is that you will bless the two of them and their families as they continue to live the Christian life, a life that many a time presents a lot of challenges, but a life where we know that we are not alone. God is with us. God loves us in Christ Jesus. I pray your blessing upon the two of them. In Jesus' name, amen. So you two, what I would like to do is just to share um, a few comforting and wonderful words with you. So, and, and this is all based on Scripture. So God is calling the two of you uh, to go into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you. And dear family, brothers and sisters, um, attend to these two new members. Pray for them and encourage them to live in Christian love because our Lord and Savior said, if you love one another, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Once again, welcome you to and uh, we will now sing a beautiful uh, hymn, God of Mercy, God of Grace, hymn 39.
I'll be reading from Hebrews 11, verses 1 to 6. What is faith? It is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence of things we cannot yet see. God gave his approval to people in, old days of, and people in days of old because of their faith. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we, see, that we, what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. God accepted Abel's offering to show that he was a righteous man. And although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us because of his faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. Suddenly he disappeared because God took him. But before he was taken up, he was approving as pleasing to God. So you see it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that there is a God and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Thanks so much for uh, our lectionary reading this morning, Peter. Thank you very much. So, dear family and friends, this morning I would like to just share a few thoughts on faith. The reading that Peter did this morning started with the question, so what is faith? Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a wonderful opportunity, and I consider this a wonderful opportunity to talk to people that don't believe in God. Um, Those are extremely rewarding uh, discussions that I sometimes have with people. And it's interesting, I don't know if I'm mistaken, but in my discussions with people that don't believe there is a God or don't believe in God, it's not as if they don't believe anything. It's just that they don't believe in God as revealed in Christ Jesus they are kind of open for many other stuff that they believe in life, even some spiritual and religious realities. But it's almost as if there is this this gate that they cannot open to believe in God as revealed in Christ Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit. Minds are open to many things except to God. Now, I believe it's also true that knowledge is actually impossible without faith or without belief. The the ability to believe, the ability to have faith, is actually part of our DNA as human beings. Today, we were witnesses of Dana and Anna standing here in front of the congregation and professing their faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's Son. I believe in the work of the Holy Spirit in my life and in the church. And so do we. The question is, why do we believe this? Why do we believe this? We believe this because God loves us and because God has revealed him in our personal lives as the God who saves us in Christ Jesus, a God who always wants the best for our lives, although we might sometimes experience circumstances where it's difficult and hard to believe this. And Maybe I I could have asked this morning, um, you know, share some of the reasons why you believe in God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But maybe this actually summarizes it. God loves us. God loves you. God loves Johan. God loves everybody. Now, it's interesting that... um, yeah, as, as human beings, many people just don't want to believe this or don't want to embrace this. 
And maybe I should share a story on, on how this sometimes works, you know. So I also get sick, um, like everybody else, but this is just uh, kind of a fake story. Say, for instance, I really struggle with abdominal pain. And, and I take my two Tylenols and I go to bed, and tomorrow it's a little bit better, but in the afternoon it's really worse. And then I go to emerge. And uh, they say to me, oh my goodness, after they've done some uh, tests and stuff, you have a hyperinflated appendix, and this thing is ready to pop. We're going to take you to the operating room immediately. And, and Johan would say, no ways. No ways. I believe in my Tylenols. Sorry, I'm leaving. And I have my two more Tylenols the evening. The pain doesn't really go away. Uh, during the night, this appendix of mine pops. It infects my intestines. And uh, I pass away. Seven days later, my family and friends celebrate my life. What happened? What went wrong? I believed, I believed that I could manage on my own. The knowledge that I have about Tylenols, this is all I needed. And there was no need to trust the doctors at Emerge. When we are sick, we go to a doctor because they are trained and they are to be trusted. And when my doctor gives me a prescription, I go to the drugstore as soon as possible to get these drugs and start using it so that I can become better. Dear friends, why do we trust a doctor's assessment of our health? We trust them because we know when we enter their offices, there's usually a graduation certificate on the wall stating that they are trained to do this job. Now, in a sense, this is also what we have with God. Uh, God's graduation certificate, God's loving graduation certificate as the great physician and the God with a loving heart hangs on the walls of this world in John chapter 3, verse 16. The very well-known passage. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but may have eternal life. I'm also privileged to have a few medical doctors in my family. And one is a, he's retired now, but he was a very well-known surgeon. And before he could operate on somebody. Of course, he had to study. And then he had to be part of an internship in a hospital where he was accompanied by a seasoned specialist that was his mentor, showing him how the job was being done. And when we go for a surgical procedure, we know the medical doctor going to operate on us, he or she have had good training, they've experienced a lot, and I am in safe hands. And dear family and friends, this is the way in which our relationship with God is also uh, formed through faith, through our belief in Jesus Christ. We trust God. We trust Christ because he, Jesus Christ, also had his internship here on earth. What do I mean by that? He was a human being like each and every one of us. And the writer of this letter to the Hebrews in chapter 2, verse 16 and 18 wrote, for it is clear that he, this is Jesus, did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. That's us. And therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God. Now listen to this beautiful verse. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those 
who are being tested. I can entrust my life in his hands because I know he fully understands life, fully understands my life, my circumstances, uh, the things that I deal with in life. And I can come to him in prayer and share my, my life reality, knowing that his diagnosis will be correct and that he is able to prescribe the medicine that we need to take so as to get better. He knows the symptoms because he experienced life in all life circumstances and all life events. And maybe the last thing um, with this image this morning, why do we believe? Um, why do we have faith? The Bible also teaches us that God as our Father, the great physician, also requires each and every one of us to have a heart transplant. And now I'm not talking about our physical hearts, say, eh, because we would just swamp Guelph General Hospital or Kitchener when, when, when this should be true. But, but we need a spiritual heart transplant. The prophet Ezekiel in chapter 11, verse 19 and 20 wrote, I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their bodies and give them a heart of flesh so that they may follow my statutes and keep my ordinances and obey them. Then they shall be my people and I will be their God. Now, dear friends, this is what we need. We need this heart transplant. And in the Old Testament, when uh, the word heart is used, uh, it's not this physical thing that we have in our chest, but it's, it's the center of our emotions, what we do, how we live, how we think. And God in Christ Jesus wants to replace this heart, this old way of life, with a new heart, with a new way of life. God is the one who changes us from the inside out. And as Christians, we should always remember this. When we witness about newness of life in Christ Jesus, when we share the good news message of believing in Christ, the good news message of faith, it is something that God does in our lives. And I cannot do it for you. Something that God does from the inside out. So faith is not just to try and improve my life and to be a better person. It is almost as impossible as to cling onto your shoelaces and try and pick yourself up. You cannot do that. It doesn't work that way. So faith is about God doing this wonderful spiritual operation, giving us a new heart, giving us a new life, a new way of living. And this is why we believe, and this is why I believe, because I believed in a loving God and his diagnosis of my life. And when you come to faith, that's when you experience what the Apostle Paul also wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. So if anyone is in Christ Jesus, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Isn't this what our world needs? I had a discussion, um, I think it was yesterday, uh, with, with someone looking at what's happening in the world and why, why all this stuff? Why all these power trips that some world leaders have? and the uncertainty that it creates for so many people. And to my mind, the simple answer is, what we need is a heart, heart transplant in the lives of the powerful in this world as well. To start living by the principles of the kingdom of God instead of the principles of this world uh, where 
It is just a matter of survival of the fittest. And this is not the Christian way. So, dear family and friends, faith in God has also taught me over the years that God loves me and that God uses me uh, in, in this world of His. I've also learned a very important lesson that my life is not defined uh, by my self-imposed limitations, but my life with a new heart is defined by God's intentions for my life. Thanks for sharing this faith with one another. And may God bless us as we as believers live the Christian life. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that faith is not something we need to fabricate on our own. But as we heard this morning when Dana and Anna professed their faith, faith is a gift of God. It is your gift of grace. And this morning we pray for those who wonder if they can rely on you. Give them courage to listen for your call and follow your leading. We pray for those who doubt. Don't we all at some point in our lives? Give them courage to explore those doubts and their questions and to discover trust in your promises. In faith, we depend on you. You make our hearts glad because we trust in you. We offer our lives fully for your service trusting that you will protect us on our faith journey, wherever this journey might lead. We pray this morning for the nations of the world, and we pray your peace to come into hearts. We also bring to you the sick and the suffering. Here at Knox, we pray for John Bullock and Billy Florence. Hear us this morning when we pray together the words that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our concluding hymn this morning is hymn 478 to Abraham and Sarah.
Dear family and friends, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.